fit into all of the investments that you have. So, mm-hmm. so I know you've done kind of a deep dive into there's different companies that have different target date funds. And so really today, that's what we're going to be talking through things that you found, kind of the pros and cons of these types of funds. Yep. So I guess just explain what, when we talk about like, what is a target date fund, kind of explain like, what is that? Yeah, sure. A target date fund, I, we're going to focus on that terminology, mm-hmm. but Uh, It is important to realize there's kind of like two flavors of it. So when you hear people talk about target date funds, what they're mainly talking about is funds that are geared for retirement savings. So at some point you're going to retire and, Mm -hmm. you know, that's what, and that fund is designed to help you meet that goal. If you're, if you have kids and you're saving in a 529, you'll see another flavor of target date funds, which they call age-based funds, Mm -hmm. which do exactly the same thing that target date funds, but what they're looking at is the age of your child and they're making adjustments as they get older and closer to college. So um, we'll just call it target date funds just to make it simple. But Mm -hmm. basically what these funds do is, as we talked about, you when you're investing, you want to have a mix of stocks and bonds. They, they both have their purpose. So what target date funds is they will automatically change the mix of your stocks and bonds as you get closer to whatever goal you're working for. So if it's a kid going to college or you're getting closer to your retirement year, they will automatically de-risk your portfolio out of stocks into bonds, make it more conservative so that when that moment comes Mm -hmm. where you're either retiring or your kid's going to college, you can be reasonably sure Mm -hmm. that there's going to, the money is going to be there to pay for it. It's kind of a form of automated investing. There's other ways to do it these days. They call them robo advisors that kind of do them, Mm -hmm. do it the same way, but target date funds are probably the most uh, recognizable and easiest thing to understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you're kind of saying, I'm going to put, for example, just very simplistically, I'm going to put all of my money into this one fund. And because these are retirement funds, it's going to adjust as I get closer to retirement mm-hmm. for my retirement goal. So, yeah. And so we might see those, for example, it might say um, target date 2045 or something. So it's the year of that retirement, right? Yeah. The way these these things are named is they will they kind of go in five year increments. Okay. So it'll be target retirement 2030, target retirement 2040. Mm-hmm. All right. Now we're going to talk about is that what you want? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean that really sets it up of okay, I know it's automatically adjusting for what I should want or what they think people my age will want Mm -hmm. when they're retiring. And so it's really kind of, you know, just the way we're describing this kind of a one size fits all. Everybody who's in this target date 2050 fund is going to be invested, you know, the same way and it's this way. And so regardless of any other factors, like that's what it's adjusting for is really age and retirement. So you kind of said there's target date and then there's the age based Mm -hmm. similar on the age base for 529s. Are they, um, how are those kind of named or titled or how would people see those? Yeah. So usually it, it differs from plan, but generally it'll be an age range. So you'll see uh, uh, an age-based fund for children between three and five, and then five and seven, seven and nine. And basically what they're doing is very similar to the retirement one. When they're, when your child is a newborn or like Mm -hmm. three years old, they're investing very aggressively in stocks to try to get that growth. But as they hit their, their kind of, you know, high school years, Mm -hmm. they're dialing that back a lot. So the way you would do it, or, or the way it's done in practice, is if I have a three-year-old child, mm-hmm. I invest in this age-based fund that for three to five-year-olds. Mm-hmm. When they hit six, that 529 plan will actually get them out of that and put them in the next one, okay. age ba- for ages five or six to seven or whatever it is. Yeah, um, yeah. But they kind of automatically just kind of move your child along. It's not like you have to go in each year and say, oh, you know, my, my kid just turned six. I have to physically get them out of this fund mm-hmm. and into this one. That The plan will do that automatically for you. So I guess what are the positives? What are the pros of ty- these types of accounts? Obviously, like simplicity is a really big one. Yeah. Um, I can just kind of put everything in, depend on it to do what I need. Um, anything else that like, are there other positives? Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, we look at a lot of different 401k plans for mm-hmm. clients and 
I, I'm frankly shocked sometimes at just how awful the investment choices are, mm-hmm. even with like really large companies. They, mm-hmm. they will a lot. They'll offer funds that are either expensive or not well diversified or just weird, mm-hmm. you know. And yeah. it's just like I. Sometimes the choices just aren't really good, but most 401k plans these days mm-hmm. offer these target date base or target date funds. And, you know, in, in a plan where the other choices aren't that good, a target date fund might look mm-hmm. pretty good because mm-hmm. that way, you know, maybe it's a little bit more diversified or it's cheaper or something like that. But, you know, probably the biggest positive is just if you are truly a set it and forget it kind of person, like I'm going to put money in, I don't want to look at it, I don't want to have to rebalance it or anything like that, mm-hmm. target date funds are a perfectly good option, uh, particularly when you're kind of younger and in, in building savings. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but that's really a big one. You just don't have to worry about managing your investments that particular fund will do it for you okay yeah so this is really so they're simple um also if you just don't know this Mm -hmm. is kind of an an answer for you so so it kind of helps those people who say all right i just need something i need to figure this out uh they go through their list of 401k choices oh okay um that sounds good yeah okay all right um so i guess those are kind of the main positives as we see them like here's good things about this um now we want to talk about kind of the the negatives or the cons of target date funds Mm -hmm. and really i think what's interesting is you were digging in you know to prepare for this episode of there's different companies so different companies have um a 2050 target date retirement fund and those could all be different. They might mm-hmm. be similar, but they're all different too. And that's, that was something that was really interesting when you're kind of highlighting. Um, why don't you walk us through kind of some of these things that you found as what you would say, maybe they're cons of your yeah. negatives about using these types of funds. Yep. Because of the rules and laws and regulations that cover financial services sector, what, what happens a lot is kind of mass market products, which mm-hmm. is what target date funds are. They're designed mm-hmm. to kind of, appeal to as many people as possible Mm -hmm. Um, because of all the compliance and laws and regs it's a a lot of times these products are just made very very simple Mm -hmm. so what I mean by that as it relates to target date funds is they might not be very well diversified so they'll have like you know a total stock market index for the U.S. maybe some international and then a total bond market index mm-hmm. in this thing. And that's that's what makes up the investments, which mm-hmm. you know can work for periods of time, but there are periods of time where that undiversified strategy does not work that well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's that's one thing. The other thing is each company does approach. I was actually kind of surprised when I went through this yesterday, just how differently these big companies, and by big companies, I mean uh, the Vanguards, uh, BlackRock, uh, T. Rowe Price is really big in target date funds. Mm-hmm. When you look at their the the way they kind of invest at these different target dates, mm-hmm. it can be really different. Mm-hmm. And so it's not just you know just pick a target date fund. It doesn't matter who's selling it. Yeah. There's a lot going on underneath in terms of well, how are they going to de-risk you as you get closer to retirement Um, are they invested in a diversified way some are better than others in that not all are great on that front in my opinion Mm -hmm. but some are better than others Mm -hmm. Uh, so it, it's, there's just a lot more going on underneath yeah. these things. I think that's just helpful to see. And we'll kind of compare to, you know, somebody who's nearing retirement, maybe how we would kind of view things differently versus mm-hmm. what you found. 